Hello and welcome to Sketch Together. Uh, on this session, we're going to learn how to add sounds to your prototypes. And uh, we're going to use Flinto to do this. Uh, on the latest version of Flinto, they added the ability to add sounds to any gesture or any uh, interaction that you put. So we're going to learn this by creating a drum pad, something that looks something like this. And we're going to be able to do this. Let me turn up the volume. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing that I did was create a design on Sketch. So I used really basic shapes, just like rectangles, sorry, well, squares, and then aligned them in a grid of uh, three by three. And then I added some colors and then I added some gradients as you can see. <laughs> and I put some icons in the middle, just representing the sound of each uh, each drum pad and and yeah that's pretty much it okay cool so now I'm finished with my design here on sketch as you can see I add a status bar and I I remove all the gradients that I thought they were cheesy so no more gradients and I just fix some of the colors and I think I'm ready to send this to Flinto so I go ahead and go to the plugins and I go to send to Flinto if you don't have the plugin for Flinto or you don't have the app go to uh, Flinto just search for Flinto for Mac and you'll be able to download the plugin for sketch and also the app and they have a 15-day trial which is pretty cool so send to Flinto and then here will automatically tell me about the scale, the, the, the device size. It automatically knew that I was working on an iPhone. So yes, I want to send it and automatically opens uh, Flinto for me. And here on Flinto, I, it looks pretty similar to a sketch. I have all the different groups that I created and also have the, the status bar here, the header. And so I'm ready to edit. So the first thing that I want to do just for testing, I want to add a gesture to these uh, guys, so to this to the keys. So I'm going to add a gesture to this key. It's a tap, and the, just for testing, I'm going to put the target at the same uh, uh, this, the same screen. So I'm going to select drum pad just as a test. We're going to change the target later, and I'm going to add a sound. And I already have uh, sounds. Uh, you can download them here. Go to the to the uh, description, and you'll see a a link to the uh, to this project and also the folder with the sounds. So I'm going to select keys one, keys one, and I'm going to do the same with this one. Tap. The target is the same one, and I'm going to select keys two. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't explain. So sorry. Tap. This is one of the new features on Flinto, which is pretty cool. Which uh, let me select the drum pad and then transition. Sorry, no transition for now. And then here you'll see a new icon that is a uh, add sound. So yeah, that's that's pretty much what it does. It just adds a sound to your uh, app. So I'm going to select keys three. Yeah. So let's go ahead and test it. So I preview it, and let me let me make this a little bit bigger. Hopefully you can hear it on the microphone. It's yeah. So as you can see. Now I can uh, activate sounds. Obviously, right here, this is a drum pad, so these kind of sounds are, are uh, what makes sense because it's a well, it, it makes like musical instrument sounds. Uh, but you can see how this can be pretty useful when you're adding a, a auditory feedback to your interfaces. So, so yeah, like a button when you or when you send a message or when a, a, an action was complete and you want to give feedback that everything is good or the, the opposite when some a, a mistake or an error happened. So you can use audio for that. So it will make your prototypes way, way uh, more realistic and, and way, well, way cooler too. So cool, I have that. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to add uh, gestures and, uh, and sounds to each of the drum pads. So again, this one, and I'm going to select this one as a, I put synth. I'm going to use this one, add gesture tap, and the target the same one again. Transition is going to be, sorry, no transition for now. And it's going to be symbol. Where's the symbol? Oh, I put right. Okay, well, yeah, right. Let's say that is right. It's... Boom, and now let's preview it. And let's make this a little bit bigger. And there you go.
Okay, obviously this is going to be a little bit faster with your fingers here. With the mouse, I'm not that fast. Uh, but you can see all, all the different sounds are working. It's kind of annoying. And it's pretty cool. So you could probably end it there and be have some fun with your drum pad. But uh, I you can also add some animations to it. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to create one screen to show you how, it, how, how I'm doing this. And I'm going to duplicate this and automatically duplicate. And just pressing Command D. And I'm going to add uh, an animation for this, for the drum kit. So now I'm going to, the target instead of going... Uh, to the same screen, I'm going to say that it goes here, and I'm going to call this kick. There you go, kick. And so I'm going to change this target to kick. So target, kick, there you go. And I'm going to create a new transition. So new transition, and here, the first thing that I want to do is put the artboard in the middle. That way, nothing changes. Uh, and I'm going, the first thing that I want to do is to start connecting uh, layers, kick, and this kick and this kick, connect layers. And then over here, one clap, one clap, connect layers. One snare and one snare, connect layers. And this is this is probably uh, pretty tedious for you, but once you do this, we can reuse this animation over and over, and you don't have to do this again. So you have to do it once only. So just like that, connect layers, connect the layers, and the header you can connect it to. It's not necessary, but there you go, it's connected. So now nothing happens, right? There's no animation. Where here, all you did was connecting the layers. And so I'm going to select, put this, let's, uh, I'm going to name this transition as drum, uh, drum press. There you go. You can name it anything that you want. So I'm going to save it. Right now, there's no animation. If you preview it, there's nothing going on. And that's because there's no, uh, there's nothing going on. This the screens are the same. So I save and exit. So what I'm going to do, and I'm here on, on the kick screen, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. That way it feels like it's pressed. So just a little bit smaller. It's around 280 pixels. So I can just put the the, uh, the lock there, 280 pixels. That feels all right. Let's preview it. So let's make this a little bit bigger again. Okay. And well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> it just stays there. So what uh, what we can do is, first of all, it's, let's edit that transition. So let's edit that transition. So instead of, uh, let's keep that spring and let's not let's use this one and let's add a little bit of a uh, little bit of damping and then the duration is going to be instead of 350 i let's test 50 milliseconds so let's test it and it's pretty it should be quick so let's test it 50 milliseconds enter and it feels really quick and it, it, sometimes uh, you have to test this until it feels right so it it, it all depends on how, how it feels so Go ahead and test it. I'm going to save it. And, and yeah, and one thing that I want to do now, is I said one, one this not to stay there. I want it to go back here. So I'm going to add a timed length. So on this artboard, I'm going to add a timer length. And this one is going to last 50 seconds too. And the it's going to go to the drum pad. And the transition, I'm going to create a new transition. And this new transition, I'm going to do the same over here. Boom, connect it. And you know what? I think I can use the same transition, but a reverse. Hold on, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I can probably use the same transition. Yeah, yeah, let's test it out. But let's see if uh, reverse transition. Oh God, it will be awesome. Oh yeah, in timeout, there's zero, zero milliseconds. You don't want any delay. So let's preview it. Let's see if it works. Oh crap, yeah. So yeah, you can just use the same transition, but reverse. Oh man, I'm, re I'm I'm just learning this actually. There you go. So now it feels like a like a, it responds to your finger, not just with sound, but also like it like you're pressing it, right? So now you can imagine we're now going to do the same for every uh, for each one of these. So let's go ahead and this one I'm going to bring it back to instead of uh, 184, it should be 218. So let's go ahead and 218. Press enter, and then I'm going to align it. There you go. So now that this is aligned, I'm going to say that this is a snare, sorry, clap. And I'm going to be duplicating all of these. It's kind of tedious, but again, it's really rewarding. So I'm going to duplicate all of these hardboards all the way to the top. Now you know what? Only these two. Only these two, and then this one over here. And I'm keeping it this way. That way I can, uh, 
my layout on my design, it's the same as the drum pad. So I'm going to put the drum pad actually over here. And this one should be over here as the synth. So this artboard is synth. Synth, this artboard should be a symbol. And this artboard should be uh, this little guy, which is the hat. And again, this is only for me to keep it to keep everything organized. Uh, you can arrange them as you want, but this way it makes sense, right? Each one of these is going to represent an animation of the drum pad, so that's why there are nine artboards. And I'm, I'm lining them, I'm putting them together just as a drum pad. So over here, this little guy should be keys one. This one should be keys two. This one should be keys three. And boom. So as you can see, all of them already have the timer link uh, that goes back to, to the first one, and it's a reverse transition. All I have to do now is create the links, change this guy. Well, not only that, it's, there's a little bit more. So the first thing that I want to do actually is change from here all the way here. So let's go ahead and do that. So target, uh, instead of drum pad, this should be keys one. This, and hold on. I'm going to change the transitions on all of these. All of these, the transitions is going to be uh, drum press, done. And now this one should be, uh, instead of drum pad, it should be keys two. This should be keys three. Okay, so all the way here. This one should be synth. This one should be symbol. This one should be hat. Let me zoom in so you know what the hell's going on. This one should be clap, and this one should be snare. And where's the snare? There you go. There you go. So now we have all of our artboards connected. Now what we need to do is add the, uh, the animations, the transitions. So this one should be 218. Sorry, 184, 184, oh crap, it needs to be locked. So let's actually go ahead and select all of these layers. And let's press the the, uh, the lock. That should work, I think. Yeah, that worked. So now I don't have to press the, the lock again. So there you go. This should be 184. I line it in the center. This one should be 184. So I can actually go ahead and select multiples. So this one should be this, this, this. This will make it a little bit faster. So it should be this and this. And now I'm going to make all of them 184. And I'm going to align them. Uh, there you go. So all of them should be aligned. Yep, that was easy. That was cool. And if you want to get a little bit crazier, you can change the opacity of them. So instead of 100%, it goes back all the way to 90%. Just 10% opacity, so it fades away a little bit. And let's do the same with this guy and this guy. 90% opacity. And okay, let's just set out. <laughs> Hopefully it works. Hopefully it works. Oh man, how cool does that look? That's freaking awesome, right? So, so yeah, that's uh, that's as easy as it gets. Okay, so now I'm ready to view this on my phone. And to do this, I can go ahead here on the viewer and I can select my phone. If you have it connected on your uh, via USB, you can go ahead and do it. And the first thing that you want to do before that is probably get the Flinto app. Once you open the Flinto app, you install and, and open the Flinto app, you will be able to see the uh, your phone from here. Okay, so I have the prototype. It's loaded on my on Flinto, and I can start testing it. So let's go ahead and do that.